as promised over on transistor radios, I'm actually going to do a video now about early solar transistor radios. Basically, back in the uh, around the turn of the 50s, there were a couple of innovations came in which really helped both miniaturize and make things portable for the radio world, and in general as well, helped obviously drive music revolutions and all kinds of things. So let's just start with this little diminutive little thing here, and I'll put it down here and focus on it. This is actually an oval transistor. Most uh, transistors these days that you see, if you actually see that outside of integrated circuits, would actually be more round in nature. But in the old days, uh, they, you'd actually get the three pins like this, an oval. And uh, basically the transistor came out in around, well, actually was first demoed in 1947, around the end of, end of December at Bell Labs. Uh, Bell was actually the hub of American electronics and really did uh, push forward some of the innovations uh, back in the in the mid to late 50s and 60s. So people credited with that were Shockley, Barden and uh, Bretain, I think, or Bratton, or however you want to say it. But anyway, those three guys actually won the Nobel Prize for the transistor. And from the transistor, basically, the first company to actually come out with a usable, well, obviously there are several companies, it was probably mil more mili military use first, but uh, this is actually probably the first commercial use. And this is actually a Regency TR1. Actually, this is this one is actually a variant. This is the Belova variant, but it's exactly the same. So I don't know if you can see in this. Let's just see if I can focus. Let's just go back a bit. Probably can't focus super well, but... You can see the various transistors in there, uh, actually the oval ones, there's, there's one here, which is kind of, I don't know if you can make out, that's kind of a rust color with a little red dot on, there's another one here. Uh, but basically they put several of these into this smart uh, package through Regency, and this is actually a working one with batteries in. Uh, if we actually turn this on, you can hear, it's just, sorry. Um, it's a big deal. You can see it's got a nice big brass tuning dial. North Lynn, this is the very desirable <laughs> green colour. You can see it's actually got white flecking through it. So, and this, this, this radio I'll cover in another thing. This is actually a very special radio, but I'll cover this one some other time. But uh, anyway, you can see it's very great. You can stick it in your coat pocket. You could take tunes with you anyway. Absolutely great. So anyway, what else could you do to make this more portable? Well, this has a big, I'm not going to open this one up because you can see this is very clean. But if you see here on this one, this actually has a big 21 volt battery. Now, later on they came out with transistors which could be driven from lower voltages. And the great thing about that is it actually spurred on the next innovation we're going to go to, which is solar panels. So unfortunately I don't have a very old solar panel, uh, I have a few panels, but this is a modern day solar panel. Basically, as you can see, this one will actually put out a fair bit. It'll actually peak power put out 3 watts, uh, and about 9 volts. It's a great little thing. It's meant, well, you can see this one will plug into almost anything, it's got a nice little end here. But back in the early days, they weren't putting out anywhere near this amount of power and weren't anywhere near this efficient. And these were actually also invented at Bell Labs. Basically, the first practical one probably came out in 1954, which is actually about the same date as these Regencies came out. And that was maybe a 4% efficiency uh, on the solar panel, and that was uh, Chaplin, Pearson, and Fuller. And uh, that actually found pretty wide commercial application in satellites. And the first actual satellite to go up was probably the Vanguard one back in 58. But a little bit before that, actually, someone thought of the bright idea of taking this and taking the solar panel and sticking them together. And that's what we're going to cover, a few of the early uh, solar radios today. So, scoot these away. So, the first one, <coughs> there's actually a couple of firsts in solar radios. The first one actually powered by solar is probably this one. Let's put this up. <coughs> Here you go, let's get a nice good shot of that. You can see it's got great 50s styling, but uh, this is the uh, Admiral 
basically there was 7L12, 14, 16, 18, and they were just different colors. This one's yellow. I actually have a slightly worse to wear one, which is, some people call it salmon, some people call it orange. There's an, yet yeah, another one, which is green. And there's actually a red one. If you actually look on 50s transistor radios website, you'll see the red one, which is actually in better, better condition than most of these. But basically, if we just quickly flip these open, well, actually this one's so, okay. A little rusty in the battery pack, but if we just bring this up, you can see here's all its wonderful transistors. And it has this wonderful little socket here. Now this one's worn off, but if we actually look at the orange one, Let's see if I can actually get, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, it says Sun Power. And all the way back in 1956, uh, basically the radio cost 60 bucks, or 59.95. So let's just concentrate on this one. And you can see it's got wonderful little features. You can actually move the aerial wherever you like. If it's not receiving very well, you can do this. It's called a rotoscope antenna. Push that down. As you saw, it can run from big, I believe it's eight batteries, isn't it? Uh, six of them. So providing nine volts. And as I said, it has the wonderful power socket at the back. Uh, <coughs> the actual, there was an optional solar pack, which was pretty expensive at the time. I believe its price was $185 at the time. So if you can imagine that scaled up, this was in 1956 to today's money. And what I'll do is actually I'll overlay a couple of graphics of the original solar pack. Uh, I've had a couple of people help me out on this uh, to provide pictures. Basically, they come up very, very rarely. And as you can guess, $185, very few people brought them. But they came with its own pouch, which went around the radio, and then actually the solar pack, which was inside. So what we can do today, just quickly, let's see if I can do this, is actually show one running off solar power have roughly as you can see there's a little modern commercial solar panel it's about the same same size as the solar pack and what we'll do is we'll shove this in I've got a little adapter here which goes through to the same power socket on the back we'll stick this in and we'll go outside with this one and then we'll come back and do the rest of them so dum -da dum -da dum dum as soon as it's a great day today we'll go out in the sun Whoops. And. Sure. Uh, and there you go. Kind of Whoa. By accident, but uh, we got quite a big change here. Uh, now, and you can hear it uh, motorboating uh, a little bit there, but. Uh, here you can so basically well, see. Right now, very young, here. On the ground. Uh, yeah. Here's the solar panel. Let's just cover the solar panel just to show it's, it's actually being day. driven. You can see it's not too bad. Go through the channels. Now I could fix the motor boating, but I decided to leave this one pretty stock. Uh, the actual green one we have down here actually works works better than this one, but this one's the cleanest one just to show. <clears throat> you see a bit ad hoc here on going in and out, but anyway, that's the, the Admiral. I believe the red one was the 7L16, the yellow one, the 18, uh, the green was the 12, and I believe the salmon was the... actually maybe the salmon was the 18. Anyway, I'm getting a little mixed up. But as you can see, a great radio, looks absolutely fantastic these days. Could probably do with a bit of polishing this one. Uh, one thing they all seem to come with yellow covering on this. Now, you can try and remove that, but I would advise anyone who gets one of these not to do that, otherwise you might end up with this. It's almost impossible to remove the yellowing, so just leave it the way it is if you do get one of these. Okay, let's move on. What I'm not going to cover is... Well, I am, because I was... Uh, basically given some great images of an Acupian radio, or Ac I don't know how to say Acupian. Basically, uh, this, this was not the world's first powered solar radio, but it was actually the first all-in-one solar radio. What 
I will show is kind of its modern equivalent. So here's kind of a modern equivalent with a big solar panel on one side. On the other side you have the radio. But basically the, the uh, Akiopean was made by uh, Sarkis Akiopean back in uh, 1957 and <clears throat> it had a price of roughly $12. Now it, it came in a kit form and also came as the radio put together so uh, it was up to you what you wanted. Uh, it basically had a one transistor amplifier which probably didn't amplify its super amount but uh, yeah it came uh, as a kit already built. Uh, Akipian was, was a pretty interesting guy and his company still survives today. He it makes uh, AC DC power supplies but uh, you actually go to their website, you can see a history on the Akipian radio. Okay, moving on with our history of the transistor radio. So basically, we've, we've already seen, we've got the Admiral, uh, and the Akipian came along. Uh, nice all-in-one transistor radio. Uh, it's one transistor. What you really wanted then was actually a real transistor and driven by a, probably a big solar array. So partially along that direction, we come to the wonderful Sony Corporation. This was actually one of the first Sonys. Now this is the TR6. You can see a great big coat pocket radio. Uh, has great sound. This one, as most of them have, have cracks all over. This is actually a very, very brittle plastic. Uh, just open it up. I've got the back slightly off. As you can see, there's the wonderful lidance. Uh, several of the overall Sony transistors here in grey. I don't know if you can make those out. Uh, this is driven off of four batteries. Uh, put the back back on that. Came in several colours. This is the green. Uh, <clears throat> there's several other desirable colours. There's kind of a maroony colour. Uh, I forget the other couple of colours, but uh, if you actually go to... Oh, I forget the name of the website now. But, it, but uh, there's several websites dedicated just to the Sony TR6. It was such a great radio. Anyway, the reason why we brought this up is there was a company down in Los Angeles, uh, Hoffman, and in 1958 Hoffman managed to get the Sony radios from Sony and Hoffman was very good at solar panels. Basically between 1958 and 1960 uh, Hoffman took that 4% or 4.5% from Bell Labs in terms of solar panels and increased the efficiency from that to 14% uh, through 1960. So you can see they were pretty good pioneers. Anyway, what they managed to do was take that Sony innards and put this very chunky handle on. And this is actually probably something you'll never see another one, or there might be a couple, which has a case which is not broken at all. Uh, as you can see with this big chunky handle, I don't know if you can feel it, it probably weighs a good couple of pounds, this handle. It's just solid brass and a big chunky piece of perspex here. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that would normally crack these side pieces, crack, you know, you drop it, it would crack here. But you can see it's all very nice. And just to show you it was still made by Sony, this is actually the Sony kickstand on the back. If you actually take the back off this one, just to show again, and I actually borrowed the battery pack from the Sony TR6, sacrilege, but you'll see why in a minute. Basically the solar panel probably would work, but I can actually see one small delamination in the cells as you go across and I wasn't going to take it apart and fix it but kind of over this side you can see that but anyway that would normally provide power down these two side rails as you can see it's a very similar radio to the Sony probably is the Sony design just uh, made by Hoffman and as you can see it takes four batteries as well so it can be driven from both put the back on this one the Sony works as well, by the way, TR6, but we'll just show that this one works. Switch it on. You see this fantastic dial here. Very good for a sensitive selection of your various channels. See, it still works very well. So it picks up a fair number of stations. Turn that on. All the way down, you can see, you know, you can see that dial. That's got this great little gradation as you go up and down, and then switches off. It's exactly the same on the TR6. Uh, but you can see Hoffman probably had a, a field day with this. It was very expensive. It was 90, $159 at the time, which was probably a king's ransom if you multiply that into today's dollars. But 
Anyway, it was the cutting edge. Solar radio, driven off of solar panel. As you can see, great volume. It was probably about the same volume with the solar panel. Because I'll, I'll show you some more Hoffmans in a minute and you can see the volume they can put out. So anyway, let's move on from this. So a little later, let's just remove the TR6 as well. No, I'm sorry, this, 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 I had the back off. This is actually the Hoffman BP411. The other colours in the series came with different designations on the, the whole BP, but uh, this one's uh, sand, I think, desert sand. I think there's a really nice red one, if you ever get a hold of one of those, and a circus pink one, which is very pretty as well. Anyway, going, uh, going along, Hoffman jumped to creating a more integrated radio after this. As you see, this one comes in some great colours as well. Uh, I have this white one, but it actually comes in a very nice red. I think I've seen a green one as well. But uh, this would be the uh, Hoffman. I think this one is the OP706, but it could be different first numbers. I haven't taken the back off recently, but... Uh, Anyway, there's, uh, it'll, they're all 706 radios. This one has a great integrated solar panel at the top. You see quite a few smaller cells than the other one, but still quite a few putting power together. This great dial here, and then, I don't know if you can make out, these are kind of a little star field here. Uh, can be driven from battery. There's a battery that goes in there, but today we don't actually have a battery in, and we'll show it running in the sun in a minute. Let's put the back back on. You can see a switch here between battery and solar. Let's just put that back on. And as I say, this came out roughly 1959. So you could have your, whoops, this has an awkward little corner down here. Let's just put that back on. So before I do that, I'll go on to the next Hoffman. So that, as I said, was the uh, OP706. Hoffman made it even smaller and more integrated. This this is actually a pretty solid and chunky feeling radio. This is actually a 1962 Hoffman, the BP709XS. Uh, proudly sticking the Hoffman logo down here instead of the corner. And same same thing on this one. Battery, uh, solar select, and as you can see, it's it's a uh, well. I actually prefer this one, but this one is a lot more compact, or not a lot more compact. Certainly more compact, but. Uh, they both work very well. So what we'll do next is we'll actually take those quickly outside just to hear them in the sun. Okay, so now we're outside in the sun. This is why I didn't record outside. We've got a bit of road noise, but basically we'll start off with the uh, 706. Let's just stick that. You can see you've got a little bench here. Let's just stick this guy in the sun. Uh, as you can see, you can see it's still... Still a great radio, even today. And let's just switch that one off. That one that has been recapped. This one has not actually been recapped, but this one actually still... I know, if you can see, this one also works pretty well in the sun. Again, just cover the sun. No sun, sun, no sun. Just tune that up and down. A little less sensitive on this one. Picks up a few stations. The San Francisco Waterfront Show will involve two barges loaded with 10,000... So, you see this one? One will be in front of Pier 39. Works pretty well. So you can imagine someone back in the 60s, early 60s, going, Whoa, let's go down to the beach, listen to their favourite radio station. It wasn't stereo in those days, so Frank, great just to wait. switch it on. And you can almost absolutely and July 6th to see, your California see the volume could put out pretty well all the way down the beach. So what we'll go on to next is a little different, which is actually a kit radio for uh, for youth. So next, what we've got is, uh, and I'll start. I'll put up the actual advert uh, that came along in Popular Mechanics over the top of this, but. Uh, Basically, back 1961, roughly-ish, uh, there started to appear uh, kits where you could actually use a transistor radio and a solar panel together, build your own solar radio and uh, have fun at the beach as well. This is actually the outcome of one of those. This is a kit from International Rectifier, who was one of the early solar pioneers. They actually made this panel, and you could buy that for your own experimentation as well in, uh, in popular mechanics. Uh, and do various things with it but 
I should actually take the back off this. Let's uh, quickly do that. I'll take the back off in a second and show you it, but it's, uh, yes, no soldering required, as you'll see in a moment. This one actually doesn't work. It, it basically clicks a little when you actually switch this thing on the side. This is actually a switch to switch between the one half volt battery inside and this panel. I have actually measured this panel. It puts out a good one half volt, more than the actual battery. So uh, you can switch it off or switch it over to the battery in this. And you'll see this, this in a second, how clunky this is inside. But basically you've got the speaker underneath this area. This is your volume and this is your tuning dial. Now this is probably my suspect part at the moment. The tuning dial is not a very high quality. Uh, but anyway, we'll take the back off and I'll show you the insides. Okay, let's focus in on this a bit. So again, here's the back. I know, I'll bring it up a little closer. I don't know if you can actually see just, you know, whether it's in focus or not. But this is where it says battery off and solar. Uh, but let's actually concentrate more on what's actually inside. This is what you got in your kit. Uh, caps have actually been replaced here, here, here. But that didn't actually do any good. But I don't know if you can see, it has little terminals that come up through. <coughs> Basically, that's how you put the whole thing together. You you wound this around this, this around this, this around this. So basically, you, you know, you've got your variable resistor here, uh, your, you know, your capacitor here, and it actually has two transistors in this one. It's not like the Acapian with one. You've got one here and one here. And here's your speaker, and this is where your one volt battery or one half volt battery would fit. And this selector here is a big chunk of copper that goes up and down, selecting tracks. Uh, not the world's best switch. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. It's probably very high tech for 1961. And uh, probably has never worked. I'm sure whoever made it probably never got it working. <laughs> but uh, I managed to pick this up and said, wow, I've never seen one of those before. As you can see, solar power transistor radio here. Uh, International Rectifier Corp. So, uh, oh, I never actually noticed this number there, EP6. Okay, so hopefully that matches the kit on the flyer that I actually have. Anyway, let's just put that down. We'll move on to uh, Zenith. Now Zenith probably made one of the most successful radios of the day. And I actually have one over here. <coughs> it's the Royal 500, which was a great radio. Uh, it had various incantations all the way up to the E. This is... Actually, this is one of the first ones. This is a hand-wound one, uh, but uh, had some great-looking radios. But they decided that they would stick a solar panel in them. And in 1965, they came up with the Royal 555, actually. And this one is not the Royal 555. This is the Royal 56. And you say, what's the difference between that and a 555? Well. Here is the Royal 555 in white. So you can see there's absolutely no difference. <laughs> Maybe there's some slight different internal structure. The big difference between these two is the Royal 56 actually works. So we'll take that out in a second and we'll actually listen to it. It's never had its capacities changed, so it won't be the world's best performer, but you can get to hear it. So here we are again, uh, as I said, because uh, Here's the Nationals were so prohibitive this one on. favorites to win that this series. This is the, uh, uh, especially with sorry, let's just turn this down a bit. There you go. Going in game three so this the is the 56. They also put the Sun Charger, Zenith Sun Charger. As you can see, it has this great little handle, which you can somewhat point away from the sun, towards the sun. So it actually gives you more options on how you actually get the sun. Because obviously the old Hoffmans, you would just be able to use the top. This, this allows you to follow the sun as it goes down on the horizon. As you can see, this, this isn't that bad. Uh, its actual tuning performance isn't quite as good. Well, here we have some music today on, uh, on AM. So again, take that down to the beach. As long as you don't have sun coming over, you can have music all day long. So let's see, in summary, I, uh, I do hope you found this uh, somewhat interesting. 
of you know basically 60 years ago this kind of technology being in the hands of people at the beach uh, you can see from the wonderful old large admiral radios that put out a great amount of uh, power through the Hoffmans uh, down here very uh, how should we say very stylish for the day uh, put out great sound uh, your little kit radio over there which uh, it would, would be great for the home hobbyist, you know, a little boy who brought it home, maybe a 12, 15 year old boy who uh, could put that together and listen to sounds, at least at least when it wasn't dark outside. Uh, and then over finally to the uh, Zenith, which probably was the end of that era. Uh, now there are other solar radios, as I said, there was the Akapian in the, uh, the mix. There's also a couple of other kit radios that came out uh, that could be produced. And you can see actually a couple of um, popular science articles about producing kit radios. But at least this will probably give you a good idea of uh, how innovative it was back in those days. And uh, how there's actually absolutely nothing new when you start seeing something like this little solar radio down here. And realise the Akapian was doing it back in the, uh, the late 50s. Anyway, I shall uh, go off with that. And as I said, if anyone wants to sell me something like the Akapian, I would be uh, glad to make them an offer. Okay, thanks, and uh, I'll do another one of these on a couple more radio subjects in the future.